Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another podcast episode. <clears throat> I am getting a couple of Instagram questions uh, going on these. Um, I'm going to jump right into it. This one is from Logan, and it says, I'm in need of some guidance. My six-month-old chocolate lab retriever is struggling with recall. He just has his bottom two canines that need to fall out. Before it gets out of hand, should I use a long leash and get him used to hearing the word here for recall and use some treats? After following your channel with Bella, I know you don't use treats very often at all with her, but my lab responds well and fast to treats early on. Okay, Logan. First off, I think there's a lot of stuff in that question that maybe are or aren't related. I do, so you mentioned his bottom two canines are about to fall out. I don't think it has anything to do with recall. Um, now, your dog's six months old and teething, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but I don't think it has anything to do with recall. What I do think is important with recall is the early bird gets the worm in this situation. So, like, I've got a buddy that has a puppy that's, I don't know, probably about 12 or 13 weeks old right now. And I saw the guy, I saw the puppy. Uh, my buddy brought him out here. I think he was about 10 or 11 weeks old. This was a couple weeks ago. And... He was very reluctant. Now, he lives in the city, and he came out to here, and I don't live in the city. So when he came out, one of the first things he did was he put the dog on a lead and he br to bring it over to show me. And I said, you don't need a leash. And he, he, I do think I caught him a little bit off guard. And he's used to it. It's natural to him. He lives in the city. He doesn't want his dog to be hit by a car, so he puts the dog on a leash. So I cautioned him at the idea of now is the time that that dog should be off lead. Now, can you, can you work on heel work? Yeah, I suppose you could, but I, I don't typically. Um, not when they're that little, because there's really no need. Could I shape it? Yeah, I guess. But the valuable part about early on with dogs, so your dog is six months old, so 24, you know, 24 weeks old, let's say. So you, let's say you got them at eight, eight weeks old, which is when most people do. I usually see it between like eight and 14 weeks. That's six weeks. That's a month and a half. That window of time is really important to me when it comes to shaping recall. And so if you look in our puppy video that we have out there, it's a DVD, but it's also download, downloadable digital versions of it. You'll see me doing, I think I have 10, week old, 10 and 12 week old puppies that I'm doing recall drills with. And I do use a little kibble, actually. And if you watch Bella Be Good, I bet you I used a little bit of kibble with her too with recall. And I don't, I mean, it's been a long time since I trained Bella, but I, I all dogs kind of follow the same path with me. Not specific, but like general, yes. And so those first several weeks, I bet you I didn't have her on a lead very often, if ever. So I capitalize on a dog's tendencies when they're young to shape and develop good recall. And if I have to use a little bit of kibble, I will. I, I, I don't look good with fanny packs, so I don't carry around bags full of treats, but it's not my style. I, I think that that's a... a we won't get into it, but it's not my style. I'm not a treat trainer, but I do use treats occasionally to shape something like recall. So I, I, what I'm trying to say is if you got to use kibble, use kibble, but six months, I think you got a hell of a lot of work to catch up on because you should be in a pretty good spot by the time they're six months so that you don't have to go to a long lead. It doesn't have anything to do with the teething. But what I like to do is, if you have to put it on a long lead, I'd ask, well, how come? And so usually that means you're in a position where you could lose control and the dog could get away. Well, that's a, there's a fix to that. Go where the dog can't get away. And that's where you need to work on the idea of recall and have recall be consistent. So get in a room, get in a hallway, get in a place where the, you kind of take options away from the dog and you limit the, the opportunity for it to make mistakes. And that's where I'd shape it and form it. And hell, maybe use a little kibble at that point. But I wean off the kibble pretty quickly, as you'll see in a lot of our, our videos that we share. But now, this just came to mind. Because I'm thinking, well, at six months, I hope you got a little bit of heel work going. Because by six months, I definitely am healing them. By, by six months, I have blue heel and pretty well off lead. So he's a little bit ahead with a lot of his training. But by six months, I got a dog walking on lead pretty well. So another thing that I would do is what I call it we call it a reverse heel. 
So dog's on lead, and I'm working on reverse heel. Reverse heel really gets a dog to understand to come to that whistle, because I usually incorporate the whistle by that point. So I'm walking down the road, and all of a sudden I'm backpedaling like I'm a free safety in a football game. And I'm beep, 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 and the dog turns around and goes, oh my God, he's backpedaling away from me, and I got the lead there, and I can give him a little bump, but usually it doesn't need to, because by that time they understand they're on lead. They got to get into heel position. So now all of a sudden, they're what are they doing when I backpedal away from them? They got to come to me. So they're recalling, and it's actually a very fun game for them. So that's a fun way to, for me to get a dog that's six months, pretty decent on lead, to recall if they're getting a little bit sloppy with it is reverse heel. But it's got a, that's one little segment of the drills that I would do. The other ones were, would be so I don't like the idea of use a long. I think you have it. You have it said here, um, should I use a long leash and get him used to hearing the word here for recall and use some treats? Well, I think the behavior comes first. You lay over an audio, audible type command. I like to use my little whistle. A lot of that stuff is stuff that I'm setting up much earlier in training, like we talked about before, like that eight week old to 16 week old very few puppies will go away from you at that age. They want to be with you. And so that's where you really want to capitalize on their tendencies to want to be with you and also their inability to get away from you. Because I told my buddy that had his puppy out here, I said, the dog can't even run away from me if he wanted to. And he didn't want to. He wanted to stay with us. So he he messaged me and he said, hey, I found... So then he, we talked about... well. You know, he can't do that in his yard because there's a lot of traffic and, you know, there's a risk there. And I said, well, then find somewhere else. Oh, I don't know that there is. So I, I challenged him. I said, find someplace. I guarantee you I could go on Onyx and find a spot that's public that you could go. But I, I go to industrial parks a lot. I find that undeveloped industrial parks get minimal traffic and they're usually really big lots. And there's usually some type of farming or agriculture that's going on and tree lines. And I've never had anybody give me a hard time for training my dog in those situations. Um, I've taken my dogs, I, I can share a story of this. I used to train a dog, at least to work out of town when I was doing construction and I was down in the city of Madison, big city, relative in Wisconsin anyway. And we worked downtown and I had a dog that I trained to heal really well because we didn't went up and down stairs a lot. That's a side story, but that got good heel work out of it. But then in the evening, I'd go to, I needed a place to train the dog. And there was a park that was pretty close to the house that we stayed in. A bunch of guys, we rented this house. Our company rented this house that we stayed in. But very close to this park. And I used to go to the park. And I'd take the dog and I'd work with the dog. And it was definitely no pets allowed. Like, it was Madison. And it was uh, whatever. But it, it was Madison. And there were no pets allowed. And there were people around. There's people playing sports and all that stuff. And, you know, big rebel that I am, I, I said, well, I'm not from around here and I need to find a place and I want it to be close to where I, I'm staying. And so I bring this little puppy and I start working with it. And I wasn't there for a day or two. And all of a sudden there's a cop. Cop shows up, parking lot. And I know he's, what he's there for. He parked next to my truck. I was the only other truck in the parking lot in that area. And he came right to it and he parked and he sat there. I worked the dog. I didn't go over by him. I just kept working the dog. And... About 15 minutes later, he drove away, left. Okay, I'm getting out of here. So I get my dog, I go over to the truck, I leave. Next day I'm there, cop came back. That cop, that cop would come almost every day and watch me work the dog. Never said a word to me. Now, I didn't let the dog poop all over the place. I didn't let the dog run in and screw up the soccer game. I didn't, I like, the dog was, I think the guy watched it and realized he's working with his dog. His dog is, that dog was really good. But he saw that and like, he looked the other way. And now I'm not saying go break the law and I'm not saying that all people will do that. But there, but the, my takeaway from it was, you know, yeah, I get it. I get this, the idea of signs, no pets allowed. No, the reason is, is because people don't have control of their dogs. The reason is, is because they don't have respect for the idea of the park. And so the, both the people and the dog. So I rolled the dice there a little bit, but I, I felt like I needed to have a spot to train the dog. So I went and did it and my point with it is, is usually you don't run into many issues if the well-behaved, well-behaved dog. And so that was all off lead stuff. I wasn't doing it. You know, we weren't, we weren't on lead. I wasn't struggling with the dog that was running off. Now the, the hurdle that you have is he's six months old. The beauty of it is, is he's six months old. 
So when I say that to you, I say you might be past that point that made it a lot easier, which, you know, if you could rewind the hands of time and go back a couple months, I just said, make sure you're focusing on building good recall. It's very, very important at this point in the game for you. You're past that. So if you have done a really poor job with it, I would recommend with your next dog making mental notes of that. But it you're, you watch, sounds like you watched Bella Be Good, which I think Bella Be Good is a good series that really shows a nice example of one dog that I trained. And I, there's a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of episodes of that. There's many, many, many hours of training. But I referred back to the puppy video. And I think that's something that I don't talk about very often because I don't like sounding like a salesman. But I think it's maybe overlooked because some people don't even realize that we have it available. But we have a puppy video and a foundation video digitally and DVD or yeah, DVD. But those are like, those are like Bella be good. Those are like live with spry. Those are like, um, kind of Cali keep on a little bit. Those are kind of like, uh, Cody go back. Those are all series that we did on YouTube, but they're real long and they're, they're not concise. We're doing one with that, with Makina right now, our pointing dog, um, our setter. So, those are all like good examples of stuff, but they're real broad in general and specific to that dog. And we've also done these videos that are more, more, more structured, I would say, and more sequenced and more, well, those, those two videos are really sequenced because one foundation follows puppy. So our puppy stuff is like what I'm doing those first four months. And you'd see a bunch of the drills that we do in there, but it's just, it's three and a half hours long. It's not... Bella Be Good, I bet you, is a total of 40 hours of videos. So it's actually maybe, I think they go together really well, um, but it kind of gives you a cleaner, bigger, broader perspective. And then Bella is going to talk about that video, or that series is going to talk about very specific things that happen with Bella. But Bella did some things that were so good that it might not help you because she was really good at certain things. One thing she didn't like to do was go back to the same spot. So if you were struggling with a dog that will run to send a dog back to the same spot, that was a big hurdle for me with her. And it took me several weeks to get past it. And I really racked my brain and I remember it clearly. It, my biggest, the biggest thing I did to get past that was take a break. Sounds weird, but yeah, I took a break. I stopped doing it. I stopped worrying about it. I stopped focusing on it. And we came back to it after about a week or two and it clicked with her. And so was it a maturity thing? Was it a, I don't know what it was. But that was something that there are times where I run into things with the dog and I go, maybe the best thing I should do right now is take a break instead of trying something new. But those are all things that when, you've, when you do, when you work with a whole bunch of dogs over the years, you start to like put all these things in the back of your mind of, oh, I tried this once with this dog. It didn't work. I tried it with this dog. It did work. Maybe, it'll try with, maybe I'll try it with this dog and it'll work. So, but I got a lot of that to dig into and I don't know that, that Logan, I don't know that you do. So I, I say to you, do what it takes. If it takes a little bit of kibble, fine to start shaping that behavior. But my recommendation, and you'll know it if you watch my stuff is I get away from it pretty quickly because without it, if I don't get the behavior, I think it's incomplete training. So don't, don't, um, master a trick. And that, but have it be heavily dependent on the fanny pack. But if you need that to get the dog started to recall you because you didn't do it for the last couple months, do it. I did it. I do it with a couple of the dogs. I did it. I've done it in a lot of videos where I, I use it for about three days. And then I'm, I'm usually done at that point. But if I had to go back to it, I would. But instead, I look at it and I go... Get, get the ball rolling in the right direction and then keep the momentum going. That's always my thing. You, you, when you, and, I, and that can be dog stuff. It can be anything. We're talking, about, we're talking about our social media. So we have another brand called Hodeg, and it's a deer product, and it's deer season. And we're looking at our, our Hodeg stuff, and we just had this big meeting internally down at the shop this, this morning with the guys, and we talked about a TikTok video that got 500,000 views in 24 hours. And we went, okay, now that's momentum because – a whole bunch of new people saw our stuff. So now we got to follow it up with this. And why did that video work so well? Well, what could we do that? So our mind, this idea of momentum is important. And with your dog, I think you piggyback off of things when they start moving the right direction. 
And also understand when it starts to go off the rails, what do you do? Pump the brakes? Do you lock things up? Do you gradually slow down? Like it's, it's understanding how to respond to what's going on that's really important. And that's, that's ability to read the situation. And, then, and obviously that's really important with the dogs. So um, Logan, I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, shake off the idea of worrying about the age of the dog in, in, you know, teething, teething doesn't matter. Like if you were talking about tre- tre- uh, retrieving, I'd say, well, the teething factor plays into that because you shouldn't be retrieving at this point. There's a reason why I like recall to be good before they teethe. It's because when they teethe, we don't retrieve. And if we don't, re- if, if they're not retrieving by the time they're teething and they're not, what, what do you need to get a good retrieve? Well, you got to have the dog come back to you. How do you get a, a lot of people don't realize that the problem with a lot of the people with deliveries of retrieves Dog won't come back with the thing in its mouth. Well, it won't come back with the thing out of its mouth either. If you got a dog that understands recall, retrieval is nothing but a recall with something in their mouth. So when we break it down that simply, we look at it and go, oh man, that is important. I, I think there's a few things, and you may have picked up on this, Logan, by now. Maybe not from just watching one series, but I don't know how much you've dug into our information. But heal, sit, stay, come when I call you. If you can do, like those are there's four things and really sit and stay are kind of the same for me because sit means stay. So sit, stay, heal, and come when I call you. If you think about that, there's only really three things there that are very simple and I spend an awful lot of time focusing on it for a year to make sure that it's just really, really solid because without it, anything that gets a little more complicated, retrieving, sending a dog somewhere, um, place training, anything, name anything without that foundation. If you're missing links, if you're missing one of those three things, it's, it's awful hard to put that puzzle together because you're just trying to do it without all the pieces. So take a deep breath. You only got to, dog's only six months old. At the same time, feel a bit of urgency because your dog's already six months old and figure out how to get step one. Don't figure out, don't think about, don't worry about Z, worry about A. And don't, when you get A good, don't worry about D, you need B and C in between. So step one, step two, step three, it's this marathon mentality. We're not looking to to sprint this thing out. We're looking at this as a long game. And it doesn't really matter what the score is at the end of the first quarter. It matters at the end of the game. And so I look at it as, man, the game, I don't know that the game's ever over when it comes to training a dog. I, I look at it as it's a lifelong thing. It's a journey. It's a process. It's whatever you want to call it, but it's ongoing. So the beauty of this, Logan, and it should make you feel better, is you're only four months into it, and that's a blink of an eye. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really short period of time. So good luck with it. Keep me posted on it. I'm going to send you a message let you know that uh, we recorded this podcast. If you guys would do me a favor, if you find value in these, please leave us a rating on whatever podcast app you're listening to. Um, It helps us understand, A, what we're doing better, but it also helps us with being able to get to more people. And the the purpose of this is to help as many people as possible. It's really kind of our our goal with everything we're doing. Um, We're a real small business, and we've got interesting aspirations, and it's driven around people. It's, it's, I think, helping dogs ultimately, but if you can help the people, it'll help the dogs. Um, if you, if you want to understand what I mean a little bit more about that, look at our Instagram or our Facebook or our YouTube channel because we just did a little video on Tony and Moose. And Tony and Moose are a perfect example of um, what is possible. Like it, pretty powerful. Uh, I get texts from, I've got, I got a recent text from Tony that said, Hey, we're up to 17 retrieves. He's picking birds up. They didn't see go down. If you want to know more about that story, watch it. They were, they came to our workshop this spring. Um, really, really interesting um, relationship that we've developed. Um, Tony's a great guy and he cares a lot about it, but he's not sure what the hell to do half the time. And that became real evident real quickly in our workshop but I had a couple of people make com- comment on it. We just posted it like yesterday. But I had a couple of people make comments on it. And one of the things that I, I realized was it's very easy for me to pour into people that are willing to put work in. 
I, there's nothing that pisses me off more than people that would just whine. They just complain about what's wrong, but they're not willing to work to change it. And Tony is a really good example of someone who may have come with a little bit of that feeling, but it became very clear to me that when you motiv- he was motivated and we were able to motivate him even more, and he is a worker, and he was willing to put the work in, and he did. And it was hard for him because it went against a lot of things that he thought were the way to do things. Uh, it was interesting. He, he told our team, he, he didn't tell me the next day, but he told our team. And then he told me on the third day, he said, Jeremy, I said, he said, we almost didn't come back after Friday. Our workshops are Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And after Friday, he said, we almost didn't come back. Oh man, am I glad he did. So if you want to check, watch that video, it's the guys did a great job of kind of capturing it in a nutshell. There's three days of video that they pushed down into a 10 minute um, kind of overall view of what happened. But um, Logan, I hope I hope this is motivating to you. I hope it's inspiring. I also hope it kind of freaks the hell out of you because you go, man, I got to get to work. So keep me posted. Let me know how it goes. And I appreciate all you guys for listening. Uh, It means the world to us, especially as a small business. So thank you. Good luck to you guys. Uh, It's getting into fall season, and I'm really excited about it because I think we're going to be able to shift a lot of our our topics and things to the hunting, to to more specific hunting because, hey, we're here. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.